Suresh Mahadevan, Managing Director and Head of India Equities at UBS Securities is joining in. Suresh, uh, good uh, afternoon. Thanks very much. I'm sure you couldn't have missed some of those comments from Kaushik Basu, Suresh. Kind of putting, yeah, the, uh, putting the absolute you know. stamp of yeah. certainty that nothing is going to happen. <laughs> Till, uh, from, uh, so don't, st stop, stop expecting anything big, a big ticket, uh, till the next Lok Sabha polls. See, I think, you know, ever since the developments of March, uh, I am actually, you know, I mean, I think, uh, I mean, we still haven't had the petrol price hike, which should have happened early March. So I think that just tells you that, you know, how very little is happening from the government side. And I mean, I actually think we, 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 it, it is probably unreasonable for us to expect big bang reforms at this point, because the big bang only happens in a big crisis. Uh, so my sense is, you know, I mean, I think given how the events of March have played out, uh, both in terms of the UP elections as well as, you know, some of the uh, things you saw with the railway budget. I, I don't think uh, expectation should be for any big bang reforms. At the margin, reforms can still happen. I think the government had shown some intention earlier last year around the FDI in retail, which unfortunately couldn't go through. But, you know, you, you could expect some small stuff uh, which can happen in the sidelines. But I think, you know, uh, I mean, while it may be a nice window before uh, for the next 12 months, I think given how the, you know, uh, coalition politics is, so. uh, it may be very difficult for the government to uh, do anything big bang is my kind of view. Hmm. <coughs> it's a pretty uh, resigned sort of tone, Suresh. Unrealistic, unrealistic to expect anything big. Uh, you know, it's all, it's all political compulsions. So where does that no, leave? No, we haven't had a petrol where, yeah, price. Yeah, exactly. Hike, right? So where does that leave any anybody, uh, you know, who wants to put money, uh, uh, who wants to put, uh, uh, you know, money into whatever? I mean, in India, essentially, equities or whatever. See, I think look, you know, currently there is a. I mean, the macro is not looking good, and I think the currency is already partly reflecting that. I would guess. Uh, but, you know, my sense is that, you know, uh, when, when I interact with corporates, I, I don't re see, see a lot of confidence at this point. So I think that is, that is, that is something the government needs to tackle. So my sense is, I think, from here on, apart from the global risk on and risk off, etc., I think what is going to be critical for India and market is two things. One is what does the government do from here? Because I think, you know, there are some really bright people you know, who are advising the government. And secondly, I think it also depends on, you know, how, you know, some of the other, I mean, some of the data points kind of pan out, whether it is GDP growth, whether it is other stuff. Of course, the 50 basis point interest rate cut has been a, a positive surprise for the market. But I, I, I do think we need some data points to show that, FY13 economic growth, for example, could be better than FY12. So I think those are going to be the two most important things, what the government does and what data points are going to be seen, whether it is IIP, uh, GDP data, inflation, you name it, and corporate results, obviously, but, you know, results are going to be a bit backward looking, well, maybe may results from next quarter onward. So that, that is what we think. I mean, the good thing going for India is I think we are not over-owned. In fact, we may be under-owned by foreign investors, and that's why the market hasn't really uh, reacted to such bad macro. Uh, I mean, since March beginning, I don't think the market has corrected by a long, uh, by a big margin. But, you know, I mean, we continue to tell people that, you know, look for specific stocks and buy them because, you know, India is becoming a bottom-up market, and it is, you know, always, I think, over a period of time, uh, investors have become very discerning. So I think that's what we are advising in investors, you know, uh, that, you know, if an economic recovery is there, it will be positive. But, you know, in the meantime, stick to specific stocks. Hmm. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Suresh, uh, so the rupee is weak. There's very little which perhaps will uh, pull the rupee back to 51 or whatever. I mean, it can't, can happen, but there's very little which perhaps will make that happen in the near term. So what, focus on uh, export-oriented companies? Just, I mean, I'm just picking a theme. Uh, 
uh, from the market, which is sort of related to the to the macro, which which works in which works in favor of some of these uh, export oriented companies. I mean, is that the way to go? Yeah, export oriented could do relatively all right. I think you know defensive companies should also do well in such a scenario. I think we are recommending things like Bharti, ITC, you know, even Federal Bank, you know, things like that. I mean, basically. I mean, if I look at, I mean, we currently don't have HDFC Bank, but, you know, I, I think that will again fit in the dis defensive. So, you know, if the market is going to time correct or maybe even partly decline because of pure, poor macro and the currency, then then maybe uh, defenses will do well. And this includes probably consumers, etc. But, you know, I mean, we, we have to, as I said, we have to monitor a few things because, you know, there is a decent amount of bad news. Market knows that. Still, the market is not correcting. So, I think, you know, uh, the question is then, what is the next trigger? I mean, if the triggers are positive, then 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 we could do well. Because, you know, as I said, we are under-owned. So, that's a, that's a positive for us. But, you know, uh, that alone does not uh, does not necessarily warrant a rally. So, we, we, we need to see the government action of some specific data points. Hmm. Uh, by the way, the Spanish market has uh, broken below 6,900 for the first time since uh, I think uh, 9th or 10th of March 2009. I mean, that's happening right now. It's uh, about 3% away from the lows which were made during the global financial crisis. 3% away from the closing lows which were made in... Uh, actually, 1% uh, away from the closing lows which were made during the global financial crisis, about 3, 35 percent away from the intraday lows uh, made during that period, 2007, 2008. 69.02, so just about coming back again above 6,900 as we speak. <clears throat> Suresh, uh, you know, arguments like we are under-owned, do, do these things, I mean, hold water when you've got... Uh, when you've got a situation globally which is anything but conducive. I mean, people yeah, want to, no, you no, know, we, no. yeah, it's, it's, you know, we, we've had bouts of risk on kind of phases where people want to put uh, money to work. But generally, I mean, the mood's been risk off. Yeah, I think, you know, except for a brief period in January, you are right. But I think the under ownership helps in the sense uh, not a lot of people are heading towards the exit, right? Very few people are entering at this point. If you see the flows, I think that is pretty evident. Uh, but, you know, uh, hardly anyone is heading for the exit door. So, from that perspective, it may help. But I think that alone, we cannot latch on to that forever, right? In a case of ma macro deteriorating, uh, we, we could see some outflows as well, right? So, I think we should be prepared for that, particularly with the way the rupee has been behaving. So, my view is that, look, you know, I think uh, the government needs to uh, improve the confidence level, which, which currently seems to be at the lower end. And I think, you know, uh, once the confidence re-emerges, then, then we could see, we, we could be a lot more confident about FI13 growth higher than FI12, which then also makes sure corporate earnings follow. So, I think that, that is how it, this, this resolves itself. I mean, there are a few unknowns like crude and monsoons, etc. in this. But if you leave aside that, I think a lot is going to depend on what the government is going to do. Hmm. So, <clears throat> you've in the past, Suresh, like, I mean, relatively uh, more levered companies. Essentially, I'm talking uh, companies with large amounts of debt. You've liked those in the past. With rates starting yes. to come off, uh, I mean, would you want to like them again, some of them again? Which have got decent businesses, but large debt, uh, la you know, uh, large piles of debt as well. See, I think given the events uh, of, of early March onwards, hmm. I, I don't think it is a good time to really go and add up a lot of beta, right? Because in case the market corrects, some of these companies could correct a lot more than the market. So my sense is, I think, you know, uh, it's, it's probably good to wait and watch at this point. Stick to defensives, maybe. But, uh, you know, I mean, I think stick to st st strong bottom-up stories, right? 
And then, you know, I mean, as and when it becomes obvious that, you know, economic growth is indeed going to recover, then, then maybe it's time to put on the beta trade. The beta trade did work in January and maybe the first half of February, though, but I think, you know, uh, my sense is going forward it may not work given the developments we have had. Hmm. Okay, Suresh, thanks very much for your time. Uh, good to have you with us here as always. Appreciate it. Thank you. Do you have the Indie TV Profit app? All the markets, all the news and your own homemade, ready-made portfolio available there for you. We will right now answer what you should sell, what you should buy when markets are down. Download at IndieTVProfit.com slash apps. Get the best app from the channel you trust.